So let's have a lesson on this saraband from Suite in E minor. You might have the sheet music in another book. It's one of his most popular suites. Um, but if you don't, I do have a sheet music edition, so there's a link for that in the video description. I have another movement from the same suite on the site, the Pascal, and you can go check that out and pair the two pieces together if you like, if you prefer. Um, today we're going to be talking a lot about the score and the markings from the original um, tablature. But this is originally for five chorus Baroque guitar. So the Baroque guitar is a bit of a smaller instrument and it has choruses, so sets of strings. Um, pretty much the same tuning, except there's some octave um, displacements involved, but for the most part, um, very similar tuning. The big difference though is the, the sound of the Baroque guitar has much more of a like a plucky sound, which makes all the strumming chords sound much different. On the modern guitar, it kind of sounds like there are these big rustic chords and they, they almost um, feel like they interfere with the sound a little bit. Whereas on the smaller instrument, they kind of just get thrown in and they're just like um, very rhythmic um, as opposed to being a big statement. So I try to underplay them a little bit and I also I'm not going for a 100% authentic, authentic like performance of the work because I don't always like the way that the strumming sounds on the modern classical guitar. So I've changed some of them and we'll talk about that as we go through the piece. So uh, I recommend that you don't go too slow because if you do the strumming and the chords, they start to sound a little bit, um, a little heavy, especially on the modern instrument the lower range. You could put a capo on, that might lighten up the sound nicely, so that's one recommendation. Um, a lot of the strumming would come with the fingers, but um, like, and, and especially on accented beats, like multiple fingers. But on the modern guitar, I really find it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit too aggressive, especially for the Sarah band. So I often will sweep the first one with my thumb and then lightly strum with the index finger just to kind of um, give the statement of the first beat and then um, back away slightly. So you can try all sorts of different interpretations though. If you don't like the strumming, the sound of the strumming, you can try just doing other things. I've seen lots of editions where they just ditch the strumming altogether and they just, um, they vary the, the, the style of the chord. <laughs> Know, they'll do that or they'll go back and forth. Um, so it, it really depends on, on which direction you go. You can morph this piece into a more generic Baroque era work or you can emphasize the Baroque guitar aspect which involves then the strumming and various other things. But because I'm playing it on the modern instrument I've changed a little bit um, but tried to keep some of the feeling of the original Baroque guitar. But I'm not a purist. I even do like some, you know, cross string trills and things like that. Um, I'm not too concerned about that. So let's just do a walkthrough of the piece. I don't have too much, too much else to say. In terms of the strumming, there's, I've included the strum markings from the original tablature. He marks where he, he wants you to strum. And but there's another marking about sweeping the thumb to get in, in, in a small group of, of notes, which is a different indication than the strumming. I'm kind of disregarding that. I usually just roll the chord when, when he indicates that thumb. I usually just roll the chord, but you could just sweep the thumb as well. It's not supposed to be the same as the, the percussive like strumming though, so it's a different indication. None of that really matters that much. Um, if you're going to play it on a modern instrument, you have to interpret it a, a little bit to make sure it works um, in, an, in terms of sound. So I, like I said, I'm mainly using my thumb and then I'll use my index afterwards. Sometimes I'll do the second strum with the thumb too. ornaments to switch bars. That's a place where he, he actually marks playing those with more forceful thumb. You can consider just it to be a kind of
kind of an accent in a way. If you don't like the sound of cross string trills, so on a cross string trill I'm doing the ornament by going open string B, A sharp, B, A sharp, or A natural, sorry. I'm going A, M, I, P, A, M, I, P, and then I mute the top string so you don't get both notes ringing out, which is too dissonant. If you don't like the sound of that, and it's certainly not very authentic, I don't think they would have done cross string trills on the, on the broke guitar, but you can easily just um, slur the figure. You can change the fingering or even keep the fingering and just keep it on a similar string. It's probably a little bit more authentic, but uh, because of the open string that comes afterwards, um, I, I kind of like keeping the open string in the bar the whole time. And that final little figure I've written out with the slur, with the double Bs, that's in the original, actually. Next half. Um, I interpret that mordant to, to be between the D and the C sharp. It's not always clear in the Baroque tablature. Um, where he wants the ornament. It could be on the upper note, possibly. That sounds fine. Um, I interpret it on the D, so it's, it's up to you. And he actually does that G in the upper position. That's in the original tablature. He does the thumb sweep here, and then a strum chord. And then another thumb thing. And then another thumb thing. And I, again, I interpret the mordant at the end to occur from the E to the D sharp to the E. It could be on the upper note. Or like, I don't know, um, you could interpret it in other ways. Um, ornamentation is quite free in the time period. And it, in, to some degree, it's clear that he wants it in some places, but other times he has markings all over, so uh, I think he's saying slap on the ornamentation as you see fit. Um, that last line from bar 13, I generally don't follow his, his markings all the time in terms of the thumb sweep. Um, it's just a little too weird. I try to include it a little bit, but consider it an accent, like just emphasized strum. I include that one because it's a it's kind of a hemiola there. It's a rhythmic displacement of the of the rhythm of the bar. Um, so giving it a good strum on the third beat. And then getting back on track. Sometimes I don't interpret it as a mordant at the end. I, I like just do a little pagetura or grace note. It's funny when I put these uh, additions together of Baroque guitar music because I always like to think that it's going to be very simple at first, but then once you start looking at the original tablature, you have to start making some serious decisions as to whether you want to include all the strumming. It can sound very disjunct and very strange. Um, however, if you check out, like, um, I've posted some um, videos of Vizay just this week of, of someone playing it on Baroque guitar, and it, it sounds quite different when they do the full amount of strumming. It sounds quite good, and it's very interesting, and it's very um, idiomatic to the Baroque guitar. Um, but I recommend on the modern instrument that you play around with your sound. You can get rid of the strums and the sounds quite nice. You know, you, you, can, you can make it your own aesthetic as long as you're within the umbrella of the Baroque era. But that said, um, part of the charm of this music is that it is guitar music. It's Baroque guitar music, and so you get to actually do some strums and stuff. It's just hard to mix it 
in with the Baroque aesthetic without making it sound like you're just like doing flamenco stuff on the modern guitar or you're just like kind of a rock guitarist like just strumming away when you find a chord and then you're not paying attention to counterpoint or something like that. But really when you look at this music there's not a lot of counterpoint involved in the chords and so if you don't strum you have to do something to make sure that it sounds like something's happening. So varying the bass note for example is one option. If you don't do that though then you just have three plain chords presented um, which is a little plain it doesn't seem to make sense in terms of baroque music to just slap chords down on the page put it in the context of the instrument you have this rhythmic strong weak strong and then these ornaments and these little counterpoint sections it makes much more sense of like baroque music at its height in, in terms of like um, you know Bach and, and other counterpoint specialists but then the secular side of like guitarists just like, you know, strumming away in the time period. So it's, it's a joy to kind of explore the era and explore the instrument and get into some early music ideas. <laughs> 